This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, and verse 1. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, upon Shigayonath. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years, and the midst of the years make known. In wrath, remember mercy. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba'asham Yahushai, Ba'asham Ha'akwadash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. Yahweh Ba'asham Yahushai, Ba'asham Ha'akwadash, Brock Dumb, to Zaquanium, Wa'akim, Wa'akwafium. You know, you elders, you brothers, you sisters, the hopeful elect out there laboring, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, giving diligence, making calling and election sure, and of course, keeping faith. And Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, in these last days, in these perilous times that we're living in. This is Brother Bashai, Bon Yahshua Allah. And this will be a quick lesson through the Spirit and Pavi Yahweh Bashim Shai on mercy and wrath come from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. When the Most High Yahweh sent back his beloved son Yahweh Shai, he's coming back to destroy the wicked, subdue the nations, but have mercy upon the elect, man. Gather the elect from the four winds of the heaven, man. You know, sin is angels. That's in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, 29 on down. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, man, the sun will be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. You see? And he's going to send his angels, man, to gather the elect from the four corners of the earth. You see, in the midst of that destruction, man, in the midst of World War Three popping off, missiles saying everywhere, you know, but that's, that's the wrath of the Lord. Those miss missiles are the army of the Lord, man. Those are those arrows that, that's going to get shot to the end of the world. Um, prophesied in the book of Second Urges. I believe that's the um, 16th chapter. You see? So listen, man. We got to always remember this, man. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahushah, He's bringing the evils upon this world. He's bringing that wrath, man. He's bringing that fire. He's bringing that pestilence, the destruction, the famine, you know, desolation. You know, he's bringing all hell, man. But in the midst of that, he's going to remember mercy, man. He's going to have mercy upon who? His elect. Those that have been serving him, man, to the best of their ability. Those that repented, man, you know, and did not take this truth lightly, man. They took this thing serious. And that's the whole full leg, starting with the elders and apostles on down to us younger brothers, you know, pushing the word, the believers out there that helps, you know, there's the sisters out there that believe in Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, meek, humble, and quiet. You know, the Lord will have mercy upon his elect in these last days. And I pray, you know, I beg the Lord that we're a part of that number, man. You sincere brothers, you sincere sisters. I myself, you know, I just pray we're part of that number of the elect, right? Because that, that wrath is going to be, man, it'll be destruction, death, darkness, gloominess. The scripture said that enjoy the second chapter, man. You know, the sound of the alarm in his holy mountain, you know, blow you the trumpet in Zion. Because that day is a day of wrath, man. You know, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of distress. You see? And that's all the wrath of Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushua, the creator of the heavens and earth, man. Right? Let's read this um, precept again. I got another one. Habakkuk 3 and verse 1. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shagayonath. O Yahweh, by Hashem Shai, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. You see, the prophet Habakkuk heard the speech of the Lord. You see, like we're hearing the speech of the Lord through his prophets, through his men. They got set up, man. I know personally, when I first came into the faith, I heard the brothers teaching the word and it put fear in my heart, man. You know, if I don't repent, I'm going to die. That's how I knew it. You know, I just knew it. I gotta, I gotta get right, man. I gotta stop doing this. I gotta stop doing that. You know, things I can't control. I said, let me stop doing that shit, man. And serve the Lord before he puts me to death. You know? So, oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid, man. So the scriptures say that too. In Amos the third chapter, shall not a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid. You know, we're blowing that trumpet. We letting people know that destruction is coming. Death is coming. These Edomites are scared shitless, man. The least they're terrified because they know they're about to go into slavery. You know? Jake's just proud, man. They got a lot of wicked Israelites. They're just proud. So they don't think it's going to happen in a lifetime. But guess what? It's going to happen. And when all hell are breaking loose, that's when they can be like, oh, snap, a prophet was amongst us, man. You know? But they're going to get caught up in the wrath of the Most High. And the Lord not going to have mercy upon two thirds. You see? That's prophesied in the book of Ze um, Zechariah 13 and verse um, 7 on down to 9. The main scripture in the verse 8. How two parts therein shall be caught up and die in the land of America, Babylon, and Greek. So listen, man, that's why massive judgment is coming to this place known as America, man. This whole place will get wiped off the face of the earth. So if you're in America, you know, which majority of us brothers are, you know, you got brothers scattered throughout the four corners, of course, of course, doing the work. But a lot of us brothers in America, man, you know, and a lot of the Israelites are in America. You got all 12 tribes in America. 
you know? So you know the law about to bring massive judgment, but also massive mercy, right? Same thing like back during the time of Noah. The Lord had mercy upon Noah and his three sons and their wives. You see what? That's eight people, you know? But he destroyed the whole world. He, he filled the whole world with a flood, man. Everyone drowned, man, you know? And when you're drowning, you know, you, it feels like your, your insides are burning. Your lungs burst. You know, that was a, that's a horrible death, man, to drown. You see? So that, that was massive, what, wrath, but also massive mercy. Because through Noah, you know, uh, uh, on down to Shem, you know, skip on down to uh, Abraham, on down to Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, and his remnant that he's dealing with from that nation. You know, the Lord going to show forth that same mercy upon the elect. The 144,000 are down to the rest of the one-third men, women, and children that believe on Yahweh by Shem El Shai. Right? So if you do one more time from the top, Habakkuk 3 and verse 2. O Yahweh, by Shem El Shai, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Yahweh, by Shem El Shai, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. That's a beautiful prayer, man. You know? And it's good to pray for brothers, man. Pray for the, you know, the hopeful elect, you know. Pray for the, you know, the prophets, you know, their families, you know, the children. For like when the Lord brings forth that wrath, that he remember his mercy, man. The Lord didn't forget Daniel, man. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get that account right fast, man. Then I'm gonna get another precept. Lord, I don't forget it. All right, there's another one that popped up to my mind. But I want to get Bella and the Dragon just right fast. The history of Bella and the Dragon, let's jump down to verse. Mm, 35 and Habakkuk said no 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 let's start at verse 33 now there was a now this one the um the prophet Daniel was thrown into the lion's den you see so let's read this part right here now there was a jury a prophet called Habakkuk and that's not that spiritual I didn't realize that for for a quick second it slipped my mind that this same prophet is one I'm reading about right now the prayer of Habakkuk that I'm reading in, in chapter 3 you know and it led me to this scripture right here you know, that was spiritual. It slipped my mind that this was the, the prophet that the angel teleported to Daniel. Right? Let's read it. Um, History of Bella and the Dragon. Jump down to verse uh, 33. Now, there was a jury, a prophet called Habakkuk, who made pottage and had broken bread in a bowl and was going into the field for, the, for to bring it to the reapers, the needy. Right? But the angel of the Lord said unto Habakkuk, Go, carry the dinner that thou hast into Babylon unto Daniel, who was in the lion's den. And Habakkuk said, Lord, I never saw Babylon, neither do I know where the den is. <laughs> right? So Habakkuk didn't know what Babylon was, man. He even know what that den was, right? Then the angel of the Lord took him up, um, by the crown, so grabbed him by the crown of his head, and bare him by the hair of his head, and through the vehemency of his spirit, set him in Babylon over the den, teleported him there. You see? And Habakkuk cried, saying, Oh, Daniel, Daniel, take the den that was the most high, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh I have sent thee. And Daniel said, this is the point I want to bring out. And Daniel said, thou has remembered me. So he remembered what? Mercy, man. In wrath, the Lord remembered mercy. You see? Thou has remembered me, O Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Neither hast thou forsaken them that seek thee and love thee. So Daniel arose and did eat. And the angel of the Lord set Habakkuk in his own place again immediately. Teleported him there and back. You see? Immediately. You know, then you get the rest of the account. You know, the king, you know, he saw Daniel was still alive, you see. And um, he he, he cast those men that, that, that wanted Daniel in there. He cast, the king cast them in there. And the lions devoured them immediately. But the lions did not devour Daniel, man. Because the Lord remembered mercy, man. He remembered his servant, you see. Oh, yeah, that's the water y'all by Shemel Shai. So the next precept I want to go into is the book of Malachi. Right? So now that, that was real spiritual right there because I, I truly forgot that that was a prophet that the angel teleported. Spirit has led him to that precept. You know, so that, that, that's the spirit, man. Right? So Malachi 3 and verse, <clears throat> I'll just start at verse 16, right? Then they that feared the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai, spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai, and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, save the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. Now watch this. And I will spare them as a man spare his own son that serveth him. So the Lord can remember his servants, you know, when he brings forth them evil times. He can, rem he can remember the brothers, you know, starting with the elders and apostles, the bishops on down, man. That have been teaching his word, that believe on his word and truth and sincerity. 
you know, the women that believe in his word, the children, you know, the wives of the prophets, you know, the children of the prophets, you know, the Lord gonna remember them and have mercy upon them. You know, like a man spared his own son that serveth him. You know, if you have if you have a child and your child serves you, meaning everything you tell that child to do, he, he listens. You tell him don't do this, he listens. You know, you're not gonna just beat him up, you know, you're not gonna just whip him for no reason, you know. You gonna you gonna you know you're gonna spare him, man. You know, he gonna get rewarded for that. You see? Like it's a it's a parable, you know. Uh if you ask, you know, your father, you know, for um what is it? On um, bread, will he give you a stone? You know? Then how much more the Heavenly Father, man? You ask the Heavenly Father to have mercy upon you, deliver you, you know, protect you and guide you. Do you think he's going to do everything in the opposite? No, you've been serving him, man. So keep serving him, man. Don't lose patience. Don't lose hope. Right? Let's, let's jump to verse 18. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that served the Mosai and and him that serve him not. And it's clear, man. We see Jake's out here that truly don't really serve Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They serve their own belly. They end it for the wrong reasons, man. Right? But you have those that the Lord has got mercy upon because they truly, truly believe in him. So mercy and wrath come from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And in wrath, the Lord is going to remember his mercy, man, upon his servants, the elect, the hopeful elect, which we pray we're a part of, man. You see? Now, the next priest that got lined up, we're going to get um, Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, right? All right, let's get Ezekiel the ninth chapter right fast. Slocky. All right, Ezekiel chapter nine and verse four, right? And the Lord, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahushua, said unto him, to the angel, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. And we know what? Jerusalem is the people before it's a place. So the Lord going to, you know, send, you know, um, angels, you know, the Lord going to send evil angels, you know, right hand angels. You see, it's angels set up for different things. So the Lord gonna send these angels to, to do certain things, man. And these last, we have four, it's like, it's four angels that's holding the four winds of the earth. And we get that next, Lord willing, in Revelation the seventh chapter, right? So it says, and the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark. And that mark in the, in the Hebrew is thawa, which means an exemption from judgment, right? So it says, uh, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of. And that's the whole full elect. That sigh and that crying, man. When brothers go out there and teach, when brothers do these video lessons and sit downs, when brothers pray to the Lord and send curses, you know what I'm saying, to this wicked place and to wicked people, that's a sign of crying for all the abominations, man. You see, when we, when we see Esau legalize weed or legalize LGBT and all this stuff like that, we're sighing and crying to y'all about to, de to destroy this place. We're, we're, we're vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked every day, man. Just like Lot in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Those wicked cities, man. You know? So that mark is that exemption from judgment, which is like a hedge of protection, man. You know? Which is that hedge of protection. So verse 5, and it says, And to the others, right? And to the others, he said in mine hearing, to those that don't have that thawa, you see? And, he, and to the others, he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. He told the angel, listen, Go set a mark upon the men that have signed not cry, but unto the others, basically that don't sign cry, those that, that love dabbling in wickedness, love this wicked society and world, he said, go through the midst of them and smite them, meaning put them to death. Right, let's read it again, verse 5, Ezekiel 9 and um, verse 5. And to the others, he said in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. He said, let not your eyes spare, don't, have no, don't spare nobody, man. Don't have no pity, no mercy upon none of them, man. You see? So this is showing what? Wrath and mercy, man. That's the point of the lesson. You know? So in that in that wrath, the Lord's bringing forth you remembered mercy, man, upon those that sign that cry. Right? So it says, let not your eyes spare, neither have you pity, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin in my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house, man. You see? So the Lord said, don't spare, no, don't kill, no, listen, kill utterly old, young, you know, maids, little children, women, slay everybody that don't have that mark, that thawa. So that shows how, how wrath comes from the most high and mercy, man. You see, as a matter of fact, another precept that just pops in my mind, we get Isaiah, the 45th chapter, which is a classic precept. Isaiah 45 and 7, right? I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. You see? So he forms the light. He created darkness. He makes peace and he creates evil. 
he does all these things, man. There's another scripture, I believe, is Deuteronomy. Uh, let's see, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Let me see. You have 32 and 39, right? It says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make a lot. You see, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. You know, so you brothers got to remember this, man. You people out there, y'all got, got to know this, man. That guess what? Wrath and mercy come from the most high. He created evil. He created darkness. He makes peace. He heals. He wounds. He does all those things, man. You know, so the wrath that he's bringing, because the scripture is saying 2nd Urges 15 chapter, and I believe it's verse 5, it says, um, matter of fact, let me read it. Right? Quoting that, quoting it, not going to do it, you know, as much justice as reading is going to do, man. You know, let's read it. 2nd Edges 15 and verse 5. Behold, save the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. He said, I'm bringing these things. So in the midst of all the things he's bringing, he's going to remember mercy upon his elect. Right? Now let's go to Revelation 7 chapter. Right? Then I'm going to get a couple more, then I'll be the lesson. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, so we have sealed the servants of our God, their our power in their foreheads. That's that same mark, that Tawa, man, that exemption from judgment. So who's getting sealed? The elect. They're going to say, verse 4, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed in 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So 12,000 from each tribe that's getting sealed as we speak, man. That's the tabernacle of David. So once the 144,000 is sealed, destruction and death is coming, man. You know, so that's mercy upon 144,000. You read on down, it goes into the great multitude, which consists of men, women, and children from every nation, which is Israelites, you know what I'm saying, scattered amongst these other nations. You know, that's mercy right there. The Lord going to have upon 144,000 down to the, you know, great multitude. But everyone else is going to get destroyed, man. You know, everyone else is going to get destroyed. We can get Romans the ninth chapter right fast. Right? Romans 9, and it started at verse 22. What if the Most High, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with, with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted for to destruction? You got vessels that's fitted to destruction, man, that was created to get destroyed. Verse 23, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. That's the elect, the vessels that he's gonna have mercy upon, which he had afore prepared unto glory. The elect was prepared unto glory before the foundation of the world. You see? Then it says, even us whom he have called of the Jews, on, not suck it, even us whom he have called, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles, Israelite foreigners, right? Because if you start verse 9, read that whole chapter down, it cuts, you know, any other nation making it, you know, simple like that. Only it says, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of the Most High and the promises. Whose are the fathers and as whom as concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came. So the Lord only came for the Israelites. That was Romans 9 verse 4 and I read to verse 5, right? So that cuts that. Let's get this. Psalms 25, right? Right? Psalms 25 and let's read verse 6, right? And it says, Remember, O Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Remember not thus the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according to thy mercy. Remember not, remember thou me. Let's read it from the top. Psalm 25 and 7. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Yahweh Bashim Shai. You see? So the Lord is going to remember his elect, man. This is Psalm of David. And the Lord had mercy upon King David, man. So this is a good prayer to throw up to the Most High Yahweh Bashim Shai to not remember our sins. To blot out our transgressions, man. And, and remember us for, for his goodness sake, man. Remember mercy, you know. And we're going to be, we going to have, man, we got to call upon Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. These times is coming is going to be fucking crazy, man. You know, it's going to be, yeah, man. Brothers got different dreams, you know. Brothers, you know, uh, re, you know, when you read the scripture, you actually like picture it, man. Envision it, you know. Because it's going to happen, man. And that's how you know the times going to be bad. Our forefather Ezra said, woe is me, woe is me who delivered me in those days. 
You know, let's get Hebrews, the fourth chapter, Hebrews 4 and verse 16, and it reads, Let us therefore come boldly. No, no, no. Let me see. Oh, yeah, yep, yep. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need, man. You know, that reminds me of the scripture in Psalms, the 24th chapter. You know, in time of need, man, we need grace, we need mercy, man, by Yahweh Shai. Psalm 34 and verse 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit, man. So the Lord gonna remember mercy, man. You know, let's get Micah the seventh chapter. Right. Let's get Micah 7, man. So these are scriptures, Lord willing, is edifying, you know, and um, a faith builder, man, to you brothers out there and you sisters. Micah 7 and verse 18. Who is a power like unto thee? Watch this. Who is a power like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? The remnant is who? The elect. You see? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. So the heavenly father delights in mercy, man. And he's going to have mercy upon his remnant. And ultimately, the entire nation of Israel, even the wicked Israelites that die on this side, they're going to get born through the, the elect, man. And they're going to be in the kingdom. They're going to be perfect. You know, they're going to be decked out. They're going to be royal. They're going to be kings and princes and princesses, you know. So Lord, he, he delights in that mercy, man. You see, let's read on down. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. He gonna cast all our sins to the depths of the sea. Man. He gonna forget all our sins, man. You know, everything we did that's sins worthy into death. He said, I'm gonna forget all of that. You know, I'm gonna blot all of that out. You know, have mercy upon you because he loves the nation Israel. Let's read on down. Thou will perform the truth to Jacob, who's Jacob. His name later got chosen to Israel. He had 12 sons. Going to the Israelites and the mercy up to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, and, and uh his in their seed, which is us today. So-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians. Look at first second chronicles 30, verse 9. Right? So I pray you, you know, you, you brothers been edified. I got one more after this piece of right here, and I just pray it's an edifying lesson, man. I pray it's a faith builder. You know, exhort, exhorting to keep the continuing the faith, man, because the Lord is going to remember mercy. Second Chronicles 30 and verse 9. For if ye turn again unto the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that led them captive. That's right, that led them captive. So that they shall come again into this land. For Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, your power, your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if... You return it to him. So you Jakes, man, return it to the Lord. He's gonna have mercy upon you. Right? A lot of you Jakes, you know, y'all think I could continue in your sins and the Lord not gonna do nothing to you. You're sadly mistaken. This is his last precept, right? Which is the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus and Apocrypha, chapter five. And I'm gonna start at verse four. Say not I have sinned, and what harm have happened unto me. And I'll, a lot of our people say that, man. You know, they say they've been. You know, eating abominations their whole life, nothing happened to them. They say, I've been smoking weed my whole life, nothing happened to me. I've been, you know, smoking black and mouths and, you know, cigarettes and doing all type of wickedness, committing adultery, worshiping, you know, Allah, Buddha, Sheba, you know, white Jesus, you see, and nothing happened to me. That's what our people say, right? Say not, I have, say not, I have sinned. And what harm have happened to me? For the Lord is long suffering. He will in no wise let thee go, right? Concern appropriation, be not without fear. To add sin unto sin. You're supposed to be afraid to add sin unto sin. Right? Now, why this is the point I'm about to bring out? And say not his mercy is great. So don't say, listen, I know the Lord is merciful, so I can do whatever I want. He's gonna have mercy upon me. No. Say not his mercy is great, for he will be pacified for multitude of thy of my sins. Right? Don't say, listen, he's gonna be pacified for all my sins, man. I can continue doing whatever I want to do. Right? For mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation, his righteous anger resteth upon sinners you see so mercy and wrath come from the most high so yeah he has mercy but like i just read in second chronicles 30th chapter verse 9 if you return it to him man if you repent you know luke 13 and 3 
You shall all, except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish, man. You know? So as we read on down verse 7, make no, make no tearing to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in a day of vengeance, man. If you if you if you taking your sweet time to try to return to the most high Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You know? So you gotta seek him while he may be found. Let's end it with this one. Second Edges 9 verse 6. Right? No, verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved, right? Those who get saved is those the Lord got mercy on. The elect, the remnant, right? And everyone that shall be saved. And shall be able to escape by his works You see, by your works Right? And by faith, your belief You know, your faith Whereby you have believed You know, your faith, your works Go hand in hand Because you show your faith by your works As in, in, um, as um, uh, the Apostle Paul wrote, um, wrote You know First uh, eight Shall be preserved from the said peril You see So the perils, the perilous times Dangerous times is coming on this earth Those that have faith and works are going to get delivered during them times, man. They're going to be preserved from them set perils. And shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So, like I read in Romans the ninth chapter, those vessels, you know, uh, um, vessels of mercy, you know, are the elect, you know, that was preordained, promised that glory, you know, promised to get delivered from the foundation of the world before the world was even created, man. Everything was already predestinated. Right, so I'm in it right there, man. I pray you was edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. I want to give Kohalayim La Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rachakwadash double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the like scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. Without him, I say Shalom.